Hello everyone, thanks for your interest in this tutorial on the QGIS 2 Web plugin. I just learned about this recently and I'm really excited about it because I've done a lot of web development and I have some courses on web development for GIS applications where I teach people how to make their own web maps in Leaflet. And I've been really impressed with this plugin when I learned about it because it really acts like a rapid development framework for creating a Leaflet web map. What it allows you to do is it allows you to author a map in QGIS so for instance, this map that I have here has some data on raptor nest with some symbology on great blue heron rookeries. Eagle nest, again, some symbology dependent on attributes. Burring owl habitat. And then some linear projects, some roads and pipelines. And this area is a natural gas development field in Colorado. And the motivation for this project comes from some work that I did there in the past couple years, but this data is not actually real. This data is just randomly generated data. So if you live in Colorado, don't go out here and expect there to be an eagle's nest here where one of these places are. There's, there aren't. But I think it's a nice data set to use for demonstration purposes. So there's a couple things that you need to know. In the project properties in QGIS, you can give it a project title. And this is what will get used to title the map. And this is what the browser uses as its title. And this also gets displayed on the map as a title. And then in each one of these data sets, if you look at the layer properties in this field tab, there's two columns here that you should pay attention to. One is this edit widget. By default, they're all going to be text edit. But if you change one of these to hidden, then that field will not be displayed in the pop-up of your web map. I didn't want this PostGIS feature ID to be displayed. It doesn't mean anything to the user of the web map, so I changed that to hidden. And then the other thing is, you want to give each field an alias. Now it already has a field name, but the alias is actually what gets used as the title of the field in the pop-up. So you want to make sure you have good aliases and, and that they make good sense to people. And that's pretty much all you need to know. And I believe that they do respect scale dependencies. Actually, let's try that. Under those linear projects for the layer properties and under the general tab, I'm going to set the scale dependent visibility. I'm just going to change this to 1 to 100,000. And turn the raptor nest off so we can see it. So now we don't see the linear projects, but if I zoom in to 1 to 100,000, we still don't see them. But actually, I'm going to change the scale dependency to 100,001. Now when I zoom to 100,000, then we'll see all these linear projects. Now, so I think we're all set up. Now let's take a look at the QGIS to Web plugin. If you don't already have this plugin installed, you have to go to your plugins menu, click Manage and Install Plugins, scroll down until you find QGIS to Web, and then just type Install Plugin. Now I already have it installed. So you can get to it either by clicking on this icon or from the web menu, just QGIS to web. That's going to open up this export to web map dialog box. There's a couple things you might want to change. You can play around with some of these things. I'm going to turn clustering on for raptor nests because there's a bunch of them. So that makes a raptor nest as cluster markers. If you don't know what they are, we'll see in a little bit. Um, I think everything else around in here is good. Now on this second panel, there's a few other settings that we might want to change. We want to give it a folder that we're going to export to. Yeah, I'm going to make a folder in my web root directory of my local web server. And I'm going to call that QGIS to web. And then I'm going to select that folder. So that's where the web map's going to be saved to. I want to make sure that I have my mapping library set to local. That'll actually download the leaflet JavaScript and CSS files instead of accessing them through a CDN and all the Leaflet plugins as well. Um, I'm going to click Minify GeoJSON files. That'll make them a little bit smaller. I set my precision to 5. That'll make it so the latitude and longitude will only have 5 decimal points. And really that's, that's enough to get you to within about 4 feet of accuracy of the face of the Earth. About 1 meter of accuracy. And that's more than accurate enough. Otherwise you might end up with 10 or 15 decimal points. You really don't need anything and you're sending all that data back and forth across the web using up a lot of unnecessary bandwidth. So I'm going to go with uh, Canvas Extent, set my maximum zoom to 20 and my minimum zoom to 6. I don't want a address search bar. 
I want the layers list to be collapsed when the map's opened. I don't want to geolocate the user, although that's an option. If you're working in this area and you wanted to follow you around on your mobile device, you could click that. And then for the layer search, I can have a search bar that will let you search on any one of these combinations of layers and fields. I want to search on the project field of the linear project layer. I'm going to have the measure tool that make measures distances in imperial units rather than metric units. Show pop-ups on hover, full screen, I like that. Make sure I have leaflet checked here. You could also, if you're used to open layers, if you want to create a map based on op the open layers JavaScript API, you can do that. I'm much more familiar with leaflet, so I'm going to leave it at leaflet. And then just update preview. And then I have a preview. Uh, notice it has your open street map as a background layer. And here it shows you the layers that you can include as a background map. And so that all looks good. So I'm just going to click export. And there we have it. It's got a Raptor Nest cluster. That's what these markers are. These are the cluster markers. This shows that there's 15 Raptor Nests underneath here. And if I click on that, it zooms in. There's some individual Raptor Nests. And for instance, this one represents two other Raptor Nests. If I click on that, I'll see these two. So we have pop-ups. If we hover over something, we get a pop-up. We have our map title. Now, one thing that's really cool is that the symbology that you created in QGIS shows up in the layer control. And this is pretty cool. I actually didn't know you could do this, but it does it by including HTML in, in the layer control. So I learned something. I learned something else too. And that is that there's an extension a plugin to leaflet called leaflet hash. What that does is at the end of the web map URL has a hash and then it has a zoom level, a latitude, and a longitude. And that updates every time you move the map automatically. And what that means is that you can send somebody a link and it'll open up to this same exact location and the same zoom level. Or you could bookmark it and come back to it at another time. And that's pretty cool. Well, I didn't know you could do that either. But as impressive as this is, it's not quite perfect some things that I'd like to change, and it's easy enough to change those things. For instance, I would like this to be above, not in the middle between the measure control and the layer control. And for some reason, it did not have a search bar. But fortunately, the code that it writes is fairly simple to understand and modify if you're familiar with Leaflet at all. So I'm going to come down here to QGIS to web, and notice that when you save it, it adds a date and timestamp to the file. And inside this directory with the date and timestamp is where you see all your files for your web map. And see in the data directory, we have all the different data files as GeoJSON files. So all the data is included. And that means you could actually add all these to the manifest file for an HTML5 offline app. And you could have somebody package this up on their phone and take it with them in the field. And that's pretty cool. Now let's open up this directory in brackets editor. The first thing you notice is that it has some meta tags for the viewport and also to make it mobile web app capable. And if you know anything about making HTML based mobile web applications, you know that this makes it a lot easier to view things on the web. And so here it has a link to all the CSS. This is a title again that it came from the project title in the QGIS project. Have some JavaScript. This leaflet hash is the is a plugin that gives you the ability to have the location and the zoom level included in the URL. So that was new to me. But what I want to do is go find where it has the title. And I'm gonna search for title. Maybe that'll help us. There's one, two. So this code that I just highlighted makes a leaflet control with a title in it. I'm going to cut that out here. I'm going to paste it in above the measure tool. So let's see if I can find the measure tool. All right, here's the measure control. So I'm going to paste that title right in here. That way it'll be at the top of the map. And then the other thing I wanted to look at is the search control. So I'm going to search for search and right there it is. I don't know why this is, but somehow it has cluster linear projects as the layer to search in, and it should be layer linear projects. So I'm just going to change that to layer. So this QGIS to web is not perfect, 
but it is easy to modify if you're familiar with leaflet. And then this is um, the layer control. And you can see we have a lot of HTML, and this is how we get the symbology showing. It actually creates little image files for the, all the different symbology in QGIS and includes them in the layer control. But I bet you you could include some SVG in here too. You know, yeah, so this is something else I didn't know about. So that's pretty cool. All right, so I'm going to save this. Go back and refresh this map. And there I see, now I have the title, shows above the measure control. And now we have a search bar. If I want to search for Project 610, notice it also does a autofill. And that's pretty cool. But if I want to search for 610, I'll just hit enter, and it takes me right there. This is project number 610. So there you have it. It's pretty cool. It's a lot of functionality in here. There's a lot that you could also add on your own if you know anything about leaflet programming. Now the only thing left to do is to upload it to my website so other people can view it because right now it's just loading it from my file system. And if I go to my domain millamountain.com and say I'm going to call it QGIS to web, I have nothing there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to my FTP client. I already have it set up. So this is my local file system. And this is the file system on my server at my millamountain.com domain. And I'm going to create a new directory in here. And I'm just going to call it QGIS to web. There it is. So I'm just going to go to my htdocs directory. That's the web root of my local web server. That's where I told it to save this QGIS to web. Go down to this folder. And here's the date and timestamp folder that it put inside there. I'll just select all these directories and files. First, I want a remote server. I want to go into the QGIS to web. And then I highlight all these guys and click Upload. And everything's uploaded to the server. All the HTML, the CSS, the JavaScript and the data also. So now if I go back to millamountain.com QGIS to web and hit return, there's my web map just the way I wanted it. See again we have these scale dependencies at work. If I zoom in, I'll see my linear features. I can search. I have my layer control. I can turn layers on and off. And so it's a good start. And even better, if I go to my phone, and open my web browser on my phone, I can go to millamountain.com, QGIS to web, and there we have it. All formatted for the phone, everything works. And on my phone, I can say add to home screen. I'm going to remove this random data, and I'll click add. And now I have an app, DJ Basin. I click on that, it loads it up in full screen mode without the address bar and it acts just like a mobile app. And you can send your clients or your employees out to the field with something like this. Right now it's still getting the data from the internet. But if you know how to do it, you can set this up as an HTML5 offline application in about 15 minutes. That would cache all these files, all the data, all the plugins, everything on your phone. And you could be completely unconnected from the internet and still be able to open up this map and see all the data. And that's pretty cool. All right, thanks for listening. If you'd like to learn more about leaflet programming, I'd encourage you to check out my courses on Udemy. You just go to www.udemy.com, U-D-E-M-Y.com, and search for leaflet. And I have two courses up there right now. One is called Introduction to Web Programming for GIS Applications. And that's an introductory level course, but it gives a broad overview of all the different technologies that are involved in making a web map. And that will help you understand this a lot better. And then I have a second course called Display and Analyze GIS Data on the Web with Leaflet. And that's a much more in-depth course, just looking at the Leaflet JavaScript API. And that'll teach you how you can add a lot more functionality to one of these simple maps. You can do some analysis, do some buffering, some more search tools, a lot more stuff like that. So again, thanks for listening, and enjoy the rest of your day.